This morning, I want to consider the Christian and the family. And family is important to many people, isn't it? Blood remains thicker than water. And the family is God's basic building block for society. When God created mankind, he didn't place us in countries, but in families. Nations are not established until much later at the Tower of Babel. That's many centuries after creation and the establishment of the family unit. After God had made Adam, Adam named all of the creatures. But as he's doing so, he discovers that every animal has a companion which is just like them. He's the exception. He doesn't. He's alone in that way. And it's at that point that God creates the woman who would later become called Eve. And as soon as Adam sees this uh, new creation that God has made, he recognises her as the one that, that God has made to be with him and, and to be his lifelong companion. She's his equal, but also his counterpart. And in Genesis 2, 24, we have his words. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. That is God establishing marriage in creation. And it's from within that relationship, that marriage relationship, that God commands humanity to multiply and to fill the earth. We read of it in Genesis 1 verses 27 to 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the earth. God has established the family as his basic building block of society. And the more the family unit breaks down in society, or the more the family unit is broken down by government legislation, then the more society will break down and fall apart. So as Christians, therefore, we must be those who are defending biblical family values, and we must also be those who are exemplifying biblical family values within our own families and our own situations. And one of the key responsibilities uh, in that for us as parents, and particularly those of us who, like me, are fathers, is that we are to pass on our faith to our children and to our grandchildren. In Deuteronomy 4 verse 9, God says, Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. And teach them to your children and your grandchildren. We had to be evangelists within the family. You know, I wasn't actually brought up in a Christian home. My mum was a believer, but my dad didn't come to faith till much later in his life. Yet I was evangelised in my home. And that certainly included sharing the gospel with me and praying with me and those types of things. But it also meant being trained in what was important. So, for example, uh, I wasn't given a choice. If there was a club on at church for my age range, I went to it, whether I wanted to or not. I can even remember having to uh, give up going to Cubs when I became old enough to go to uh, followers in our church because those two meetings were on the same night. And going to followers, going to the church meeting was more important than going to Cubs. I was trained from a very young age to appreciate the importance of being together as God's people and being part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was trained to make that a priority in my life. And looking back now, it's training that I'm immensely grateful for. It's training that I really appreciated. I might not have liked it much at the time, but looking back now, I appreciate it so much. I was evangelized at home. I was taught the Bible. I was taught to pray. I was taught to appreciate uh, being together as God's people. 
the family. It is God's basic building block for society and it is also the primary place for evangelising the next generation. If we want to see our church grow, if we want to see our church persevere into the next generation, then it is our duty, it is our responsibility to evangelise our children. If we want to see our children saved, if we want to see them uh, following the Lord Jesus Christ, delivered from their sin, it's our responsibility to evangelise our own children. 